going on guys? So today's video is going to be my 2016 favorite fragrances. So some of these fragrances made last year's video. And so I do have a number of fragrances here, so please bear with me as this may be a bit of a long video. They will not be in any particular order except for the very last five. So let's get this started. This one here, I absolutely love. People do complain about the longevity, but I'm actually very fortunate. This is John Varvatos, the original. So I get a solid eight to 10 hours with this bad boy. It is a travel atomizer, but I could definitely see myself getting a bottle. Um, I went through almost 10 mLs of this one. And this really does say a lot uh, because I have so many fragrances that, to be honest, I think I maybe finished two, three bottles at the most my entire lifetime. This one here, I could definitely see myself getting a bottle. It's got a plum note, some tobacco, some uh, a lot of um, woods. Very mas uh, masculine scent, great signature scent. It's classy, it's elegant. So the next one is going to be from the house of Perry Ellis, and this is Perry Ellis Cobalt. So I did a review of this one with Manny from the Cascade Scents channel. This is definitely a slept on fragrance. It's very under the radar. Now a lot of the Perry Ellis fragrances out there, they do uh, have some similarities, some similarities to a lot of the other scents out there. Like this, from what I know, definitely has no clone out there. It definitely has its own DNA. I think it's a uh, standout on its own. It has cashmeran, rum. I think that there's some vanilla, vanilla in there. It's definitely a very whew, masculine scent. It's very elegant. Um, I think that this is a great signature scent. If you're a masculine burly dude out there, you will like this one, I promise you. It's very versatile. You could be wearing something like this to a suit and tie to like a just a very casual wearing. I think that this is more of a spring and fall fragrance. Now, when I mean spring is I don't mean on a hot spring day. You know, I think the transition from winter to springtime when it's still cool out, where you still have to dress like this, perfect scent right here. Now the next one is actually going to be from the house of Canali, and this is Canali Men. So this is just a little uh, spray bottle. I was rather disappointed when it came in like this and not the actual bottle, but it's actually the juice that means that's supposed to mean a lot more, right? The juice is absolutely fantastic. It does have that typical Canali DNA. I find that a lot of the Canali scents, they do stand on their own now. They're, they're not similar to a lot of the other designer scents out there. It has its own uh, distinction, but a lot of the other Canali scents, whether it's the Summer Night, the Black Diamond, and so on, uh, minus Canali style. They do smell somewhat similar, you know, so I don't know if they're flankers of anything, but uh, this one here, lots of fruits, lots of florals, leather. This is a very classy, elegant, sophisticated scent, especially for a uh, designer house. This is very versatile. You could wear it very casually to a tuxedo. It's that versatile, you find. The next one is going to be a niche fragrance, and it's from the house of Creed. Unfortunately, this is a, um, a decant, and it was a very generous decant from my good friend Manny, and this is Silver Mountain Water. I absolutely love this one. So I actually got this one back at, uh, in July. It was towards the end of uh, July. And however, when I smelt this one, I absolutely loved it. I smelt it before. It's just it was some time, you know. And when I revisited, thanks to Manny, because we were actually doing a video, and this was uh, part of whatever video at the time, I fell in love with it right away. And I asked him if I could decant some, and he says, by all means. This is just so well blended. This is spring and summer right here. It's classy, it's elegant. Yeah. I think it's the tea note that really does give it that uh, class and that sophistication. It's a very elegant scent. I think it's one of the best elegant scents out there when it comes to the warmer months. So the next one is going to be from the House of Mont Blanc, and this is Legend Spirit. So that, this actually came out earlier this year. Now, a lot of people uh, find that this is a very generic in blah fragrance, and I can see that. It, depending, it really depends on what you like. You know, these are the types of scents that I prefer the most. Spring and summer right here has a lot of lavender, some citrus, and a lot of musk. It is very casual. I like a lot of my casual scents, when, but when it comes to um, my... The heavy hitters one for fall and winter i prefer more of the the classy the more of the elegant fragrances this is like pretty much sandals shorts and a uh, t-shirt right here just a... so the next scent is actually going to be from the house of canali and this is canali summer night so i actually did a review of this one with greggy boy not too long ago now greg made a great comparison so black diamond this, including Canali Men, a lot of the different Canali fragrances, minus maybe the Canali style, 
have a lot of the same DNA, right? So leather, wood, citrus, fruits, uh, florals. This definitely has a lot of florals, fruits, and uh, citrus, but it doesn't uh, have an overabundance of florals or, or an overabundance of leather. The leather is pronounced, but it's more smooth and more tame. It's not exactly rough and tough like the Canali Black Diamond. So this is where Greg made a fantastic comparison. Greg said that this is the Versace man of Canali Black Diamond. And Greg, you made a fantastic uh, point there. I really do think, think so. This, oh, lots of florals and lots of leather with a toned down uh, cit citrus. Very distinct and I love it. So it's a very classy fragrance, very versatile as well. The next one is actually from the house of Zegna and this is Zegna Z. So I actually use quite a bit. So uh, I bought this one, I think it was in uh, the winter of last, this past winter. And uh, this one here, um, even though I probably only use eight to 10 MLs, this is a lot, especially for the amount of fragrances that I have. Now I don't have the largest collection compared to some of the other reviewers out there or even some of the, the viewers. But for me, when it comes to uh, this, this is a lot. Now, I unfortunately was being a smart ass and I lost a little uh, cat. So I was being a smart ass with some coworkers and I lost the cat and I ran it over. So I was actually working, I, I drove a bus for a living and I started spraying, you know, cause I was pretending that they smell. And karma bit me in the ass and I ran over the little uh, button so I couldn't decant this one. But what I did is I got a second bottle. Now, what I'm gonna do is once this one's done, I'll just take the cap from this one and put it on this one. But this is a, a definitely a hidden gem. It is slept on. It is a spring and summertime scent that has, I believe it has some spices. I get a, uh, a peppery cardamom vibe with some woods and a lot of citrus. But I don't know if cardamom and uh, pepper is listed. It definitely has uh, somewhat of an incense vibe, but just a great fragrance from the house of Zeg. Now the final fragrances, all right? So I got six fragrances here, even though this is gonna be top, the remaining five. Uh, two of them are actually tied for number one. So at number five, we're going with from the house of Katsi, and this is Eau de Sense d'Orange Katsi. So I originally thought that this was more of a fall and winter scent just because of the color of the juice. I thought it had like a lot of incense and amber. It, I do get a bit of a slight incense vibe, but incense is actually not a note that's listed. A lot of orange, um, but it's more of a, um, it's, it's definitely somewhat of a bitter orange. I don't know if it's blood orange, but it definitely has a citrus in there that is a little bit heavier, a little bit more tart along with some musk, a little bit of florals, and I think that there's some uh, woods towards the base. Great scent. Now, to me, okay, this is a very versatile fragrance. You can wear it very toned down, very casually, but I think that this would shine very well when you're in a suit and tie or even a tuxedo. Um, now, when you're wearing a tuxedo, you're definitely gonna get a lot of attention, right? You know, women love a man that's dressed up. Tuxedo, suit and tie, they just command a certain presence. But sometimes you don't want an overly loud fragrance. This one here, boom, fantastic. To me, this is class. I wouldn't say it's sophistication, but it does have a classy, elegant vibe to it. It's a little bit more subtle, you know, but so sometimes you want a fragrance that is a little bit more subtle. You know, you get all this attention on you because you're looking, you're styling, you're profiling, but sometimes you don't want that, uh, that fragrance that's gonna slug people in the face. This is definitely is not gonna do that. Now the next scent, the fourth one is actually gonna be from the House of Ferragamo and it's actually the latest release from the house and this is Ferragamo Womo. So this definitely does come across as somewhat youthful but I absolutely love it. It's very sweet, it's loud and it's definitely a banger. It's also a beast when it comes to longevity. It's got a heavy tiramisu note, some tonka bean. I think that there's some citrus in, in this one along with some woods. Um, it is masculine but at the same time it's Feminine enough because of that Terry Musu note that women could actually wear this one pretty easily. This is a loud fragrance, so you really do have to wash your application. Now, it smells absolutely delicious, but if you overspray, people are gonna taste this one, and I don't think that they wanna taste your fragrance, all right? But uh, this is definitely fall and winter, you know, um, high school to maybe like, 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 as I stated, you know, it has a more youthful vibe. I'm, I'm gonna be 40 in a few months, 
in April, believe it or not. I have the baby face, but <laughs> definitely not this hairline. But uh, I absolutely love this one. The next one is going to be from the House of Prada. So I was very, um, I do like Prada. They have some great summer scents. And I wasn't expecting much from this one. This is actually my scent of the day. This is Prada Luna Rosa Extreme or Extreme. Lavender, pepper, citrus, just an amazing oh, scent. Um, it's very versatile, you know, casual to very uh, upscale. You know, Prada did an amazing job. But this is uh, more of a fall and uh, winter scent. I would say more so on a, uh, in, a, in a cold winter day. But this is suited for the, for the evening as well. My second one is going to be from the House of Creed. It's my only Creed bottle. This is Creed Millicene Imperial. Oh my God. Oh, Joe Anthony, thank you once again. I have stated, I have said thank you so many times on camera and I will continue doing so. This is just, oh, you know, I don't get a lot of emotion out of a lot of fragrances, but this one, oh my God, definitely. Uh, it's got that nautical vibe, so you get a lot of the sea salt. There's some citrus, there's some other fruity notes, I believe and a little bit of woods. This reminds me, and I've stated this on camera, this reminds me of Vancouver, British Columbia. But and whenever I go there, I have to do the Stanley Park uh, seawall. So there's a lot of uh, walkers, joggers, but also a lot of cyclists. So um, Stanley Park is in English Bay. Got that on one right, thanks to Jose Vancouver. Wow. So, so when I'm on the Stanley Park seawall, and when you go around the bend, so it's, Stanley Park is it's like, I think it's 12 kilometers um, in one U shape. So it's in, in like a type of U shape. But when you get around the bend into open water, you get this sea salt blast into your face. It's just this breeze right in your face. It's very fresh. It has like a type of cleanliness, I find, you know, like it's just because like sea air to me is definitely a lot more um, clean than the, uh, the, the air that I always inhale. So good old Toronto, known as the big smoke. Vancouver is very clean, very relaxing. This scent is definitely that. Now the top fragrance in this for uh, 2016. So as I stated, I have two here. So we're just gonna get into these two. One is a lighter summertime scent while the other one is a winter scent. Let's get into the summertime one. So this one here, you guys were probably expecting it. Ferrari Bright Neroli. So it's very fresh, a lot of Neroli, citrus, uh, very relaxing, very uplifting, very uh, fresh, clean, zesty, just, oh. This and this here, the best fragrance and summer scents that I had in my collection. This is just very casual. I wouldn't wear this one in a suit and tie unless you're working in an office setting. I get about six to seven hours with this one. Um, unfortunately, it's not available in the U.S. department store-wise, but uh, from what I've uh, been told and what I've seen, um, it's on, I think it's Beauty Spin, or also known as Notino. But yeah, this one here, fresh, clean, very casual, very relaxing, very uplifting, is just, ooh, amazing. And the, the last one here is going to be from the House of Givenchy, and this is Gentleman Only Absolute. So this was actually released this year, it's got a lot of nutmeg, cinnamon, it's uh, I think it has a little bit of vanilla. This is just, oh my god. Whew. This is definitely a gentleman's scent right here. So this is the flanker to the original gentleman uh, only. This one here, I get a solid 10 to 12 hours. I believe that this one is a uh, an eau de parfum concentration, that's why. But very elegant, very pronounced, very sophisticated. Uh, very versatile. You could wear this dressed down like this, but also to a tuxedo. This is definitely going to get you noticed. Again, you have to mind your applications with this one because it definitely fills the room. So guys, that's it for my favorite fragrances of 2016. So if you haven't done so, check them out. You know, you may love some of these ones. Uh, some of these ones are absolutely like 10 out of 10 perfect works of art. You know, I've done a few reviews of some of these. They will be li uh, listed down below, so please make sure to check them out if you like. So, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Share the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Let me know some of your favorites down below in the comment section. And thanks for your time. And, again, catch you later.